Hello and welcome to the skating lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer. Hi, Dave. New sweater, Hi. blue magic. Is that what you Yes. Like? yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, this is the skating lesson. We are going to be discussing everything that goes on at the 2022 Skate Canada International and the Velvet Season, as well as the Dennis Ten Memorial in Kazakhstan. This is this and that. So if you're new here, please subscribe below and remember to smash that like button. Jonathan, I'm actually deciding to wear blue for my costume this year, which is funny because I always wear red. And I'm like this shade of blue, you know, a couple years ago, I got into purple, like dark purple. And then yeah. shade that Jason is wearing in the impossible dream is like speaking to me lately. So yeah. Was... Well, do you remember it was that old like um urban legend that you had to wear blue to win the ladies event? Yeah. Well I mean... it started with Tara and then it was and then the whole, everyone up until Sochi, really. <laughs> I mean, I am competing against, you know, a hairdresser and um, you know, <laughs> many other fine ladies in the event. Amazing. <laughs> Not if would be offended. So yeah, exactly. they would sure. all like to win the event with Michelle Quad. Yes, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Not me among them. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you're weren't you say that you were a lady? That I was a lady? No, I said, lady, where are you today? Oh, hilarious. Sorry, the internet blurbed. And I thought you said, yeah. didn't you say you were a lady? And I was like, no. oh, wait, what? Yeah. I'm actually coming from San Francisco mm -hmm. uh, because I've been teaching at San Francisco uh, Conservatory this week. So it's it's nice, bright, and early for me at the moment. But then also, here we go right in. It also made watching in real time a little bit difficult for me this, mm -hmm. this time around. So uh, what I was appreciative of is CBC Sports was posting um, YouTube clips from the leaders often. And so then after that, I could find um, like jump highlight reels. There were a lot of fans that sort of came up where they just isolated the technical content and scores, and then they would slow it down. And I was watching Star Andrews, Je suis malade. And so she would do a jump. And then they would put it in slow motion right afterwards, but then it slows down the vocals like a creepy Halloween way. So then it would start to be like, just scream. It's, it's one of the funniest things you've ever seen. I highly recommend it. Go look for it. Okay. <laughs> but I we figured it out so that you could watch. So how did you do it? Let's discuss. Uh, so I, I went to the Opera browser because it worked so perfectly last time. <clears throat> So I had set, you can set the VPN to a particular country and I had chosen Canada. And so I don't know if because this event was in Canada and CBC was sort of interfering, I had to switch countries a few times until I landed on the Netherlands, my people. And uh, suddenly it was working just fine. Like I had tried Germany and it did not work. Um, so, so then eventually the Netherlands, um, country allowed me to to view all of the um isu categorized videos so i had mine in the netherlands i don't remember why someone told me to send it to the netherlands i, I listen i was not that clever on my own okay but <laughs> i am the type of person like if i want to see something i will go down every rabbit hole like to find yeah. it. i will do yeah. fs vids i will do telegram i will do like anything yeah. like the vpn the whole deal yes so. Well, and I thought this was such like after Skate America and we had sort of discussed it and all this stuff, I thought, okay, great, we've got the system. But the the only wrench in it was now I was saying I was in Canada during a Canadian event. Yeah. But I was surprised that for some reason Germany was geo-blocked from the channel, but then for whatever reason, the Netherlands was not. So, mm -hmm. um, and there's, there's just a, a side drop-down menu where you can select various countries and you disconnect and reconnect and do all that sort of stuff. So it was a little bit trial and error, but the Netherlands came through. <laughs> uh, my friend, Erin, she used optimal location for, I don't know if that, but that worked for her when she was trying to do oh, it. That's fascinating to me because when you do optimal location, or at least when I did it, it kicks it to the United States. Okay, and so I don't know how it works. Works. I don't know, for some reason she was able to see the ISU event, maybe because it's blocked in the US, it moved it. I don't know why that Could did. Be. Yeah, yeah. She wound up like turning it off and turn it. You may have to play with it a little bit, but then once you get it, you will be so glad. And I would just plan it. Like if you're gonna plan to watch skating this week, do it in advance, you know, practice Fine. it ahead of time, get Fine. comfortable with the ISU channel. Also know that sometimes the event 
the link doesn't come up until right before it starts. Uh, you know, there's a couple, I was like nervous this week and I was like, wait, Dave, you're an hour early, you dumb. And then, it, <laughs> so. Hey, Dave, hey, you're be nice to yourself. I know, I have a problem with that, but yes. Yeah, I mean, I think all of us do in some way, but um, the other thing I was gonna say was when I first went to the ISU page, it was not showing up under video. I had to go to the playlist yeah. tab in order to see the competition because then all of a sudden all I was seeing was speed skating videos and yes. I couldn't find any skating videos. That was the video. problem I had the other day. Okay, yes. Yeah. All right. But, but then, then if you go, they go on, yes. but then after they post the event and then you see it because I don't know, the speed skating take place on different days. I don't know how they're competing. You know, I'm not in that world. And frankly, even though people will surely reply because they're in the speed skating world. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't care. I mean, I care but I don't care. Yeah, I, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sure. I like figure skating, but then tend to travel out of the ice rink for my other enjoy enjoyment, yeah. <laughs> the last time I watched uh, speed skating, Dan Jansen was falling every single Olympic time, except for that last time. Um, like, is Bonnie Blair still competing? <laughs> I just remember that Dan Jansen's wife at the time had hair that was teased like Dolly Parton, and Bonnie Blair was doing Skippy commercials. Right, that's, yeah. It was a simpler time, yeah. <laughs> and Apollo Anton Ono, who then, of course, I know because he danced with um, Julianne Huff on- and There it is, Dogs. yeah. The, <laughs> yeah. Real, the real credit he has, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was his contribution to popular culture and whatever right. those things he did with Sean Johnson once upon a time. Yes, that's all right. right. <laughs> now, having said that, Russia made it way easy. Yeah. Russia made it completely simple to watch what was happening there this weekend. Which is weird because remember, the first channel was blocked on YouTube, but all of a sudden, remember I was like posting the videos because over the summer, they right. were only posted on Telegram. So then I would share it to our YouTube channel because it was the only way for people to see it. And then people would be like, why are you sharing my summer? But then other people would be like, thank you for sharing it. Yeah, so, damned if you do, damned if you don't, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, this channel, you're giving them money. Well, actually, I'm not giving them money because I'm actually sharing this. And they'd be like, did you steal it? Well, they published it for public dissemination. They want it out there, you know? Like, yeah. It's so protective of giant corporations' money. It's like, <laughs> okay. Anyway, <laughs> um, you know, that way we could see them choreographing for Truceva. I mean, that was an eye opener. I mean, that was. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Oh, we'll yeah. get to it. We'll get to it. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, but I, was, I think it was Chukchimichiva. But anyway, yes, this event, they did do uh, in the Fagornia Catania channel. Uh, to find it, you do this. <laughs> I should just make a video tutorial for all of this stuff. It would be like, it would get the most hits. Do you know what I mean? I, I think it's such a world that we're confused at the moment. Yeah. Maybe this week I'll make a how to be a skating fan. Like things that you need to do. Okay. But I remember when you did a thing with Jenny back in the day and she was like, Dave is teaching me how to be a super fan where you wake up in the middle of the night, you find the Latvian live feed and you yes. do all this stuff. Like, yeah, it's a world we've always, we've always had to be scrappy in order to find it. I do remember waking up, sending an alarm to wake up in the middle of the night to watch on Ice Network the Grand Prix final live. And it made, and it was also maybe we woke up to watch NHK to see if Johnny was going to make the final that year. It was big drama. Mm. Yes. Okay. okay. Moment in time. Yeah. <laughs> I remember it was like three in the morning waking up to do this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's what was interesting when Twitter first started emerging because then it was like the meeting place yes. for everyone that was up at three in the morning making their coffee ready to watch the short programs. Yeah. It was a moment in time around 2009. And then it became political and then it just became dark. I, yeah. I'm afraid of Twitter and with the recent um, sale with uh, even more so, I don't know. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. But I appreciate Twitter at the same time for its ability to- yeah, It offered a unique way outside of, I was never really a fan of the skating forums. They always had clumsy formats for me and it was a little, not what I was interested in, but always watching the events live when I was able to do so, it was always fun to see everybody's comments roll in at the same time. But outside of that, I find it rather toxic for sure. I really, I don't like how Instagram changes their uh, out their feed all the time because it went from being more chronological and that was easier. And then now it's all curated to what they think you're going to like. So you might right. see the same person again and again and again. 
Jonathan, I get like five or six skate and sculpt videos and it's Ashley and that beanie, which good for her that like this is having such Instagram <laughs> marketing, but like I don't live where skate and sculpt is. So yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Well, and even it makes me um, tentative to search things on Instagram because if I go to, I don't follow too many skaters, but when I am interested and go search them, inevitably now they will show up endlessly. So then it actually deters me from searching people because I don't want them to flood my feed. But yeah. 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 So. Anyway, I digress. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the Dennis 10 Memorial, first of all. You called it. it. When? I mean, oh. you called it. What you did I say? The entire thing. Oh, the entire scoring thing. It was like, why don't we just save everyone the hassle? Just turn in the scores. Don't even go because you knew exactly what was going to happen. And that's what happened. Although skated better for that score, but did they skate? Marina did Seems the good work, but I am troubled by what's happened to Marina Zueva. Do you remember Marina Zueva? Cause we're going to talk about this later when we get into the Tanith and Charlie, cause they're living back in time too. Remember how it says that like when people stop developing when they become famous? Mm. Charlie and Tanith seem stuck in an era with like the Allison Aldridge. One of them's Ashley. There's an Aldridge, there's an Arno. I don't know, one of them is skating with Rockney's brother. One of them skated to, I don't know. They were in this pastel. There'd be a man in suspenders. Like this aesthetic is very- um, Quintessentially of an era. Yeah. If you were like the ninth place priority team in Marina Zueva, you would have the Green and Parsons free dance. Like that right. whole look. Well, what's great about it is you could recycle it. Like it could work for an American in Paris, singing in the rain, um, a number of Marina specials. So that could yeah. Do. Yeah, and a number of varied talents and and people because it's just sort of generic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's the kind of thing you just like. You know, you take that money and you just put it in the mattress or invest it. You know, it's just a money grab. Yeah, the money. Well, and that and that's what's interesting because I was so interested in the material she came up with for Daisuke last season, and this this season the material, the Phantom, and all this sort of stuff. It gives me those vibes. It gives me yesteryear vibes, but not in a fun nostalgic way, in sort of an outdated. I like the teams, the ice dancers talk about how when you go to competitions for international, you know, you tip the judges maybe, or get them a gift, the judge from your country, and maybe, maybe the referee or something, you know, certain people. Uh -huh. Some people in Skate Canada should have done that. <laughs> Yeah. But this, um, this Dennis Ten Memorial is definitely one of those competitions, you know, yes. If not, you know, designed solely for that purpose this season. Yeah. Did you notice it was like the Marina Zueva challenge and <laughs> there was um, no uh, Marie France team in sight, uh, but the right. scoring worked great. Everyone got yeah. what they needed. You know, brand new team in their first competition, uh, you know, imported a partner from a former Soviet country, world minimum, just like that. Okay. Funny that. Yeah, it's when the skaters themselves. I, thought, are the I, most think, I think the skater was a solo dancer in August. Like I don't know. Like I don't know when they actually started together. But she I can work on the phone. She can make world's minimum and ice dance in two seconds. <laughs> yeah. Like you remember, Marina used to like be wearing Chanel and like fitted jeans at competitions when her teams were winning gold. Right? Like she did it up. Yeah. Like, remember, she had the whole. I remember this Lynn Rutherford article, like it was yesterday, because, like, it was some pretentious Russian crap, right? Like, if you know Russians, when they discover money, like, holy, you know, if they were elevated in the Soviet Union, they thought they were better than everyone else. And then they come here, right? And it was all about, like, she had the idea for Merrill's Bollywood program because she was at the Hermes store looking at scarves. And she. <laughs> <laughs> That's where Bollywood exists. <laughs> now, Marina Zueva is in a baseball hat, a hoodie, and some right. like flared. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was. What, like has, we happened? Were what has happened yeah. to Marina? Okay. Yeah. This is, I'm troubled. Okay. I am really, Jonathan, if, I, if you start seeing me repeating sweaters, like, you know, just. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
I just switched my collar shirt out. Just I am in the nursing home. Just have them switch the sweater, okay? I don't okay, care. Right, pants, it's right. fine. Yeah. You don't have to change the just diaper. Over, just keep the rotation. Yeah, keep okay. The rotation, the colors, make sure the colors are in my scheme. Yes, okay. Uh, <laughs> we got you, Dan. to Marina, but I'm not, I'm not for it, okay? I don't okay. like it. No. No. He's I'm tired gonna, from all the strings she's pulling behind the scenes. If I am going to watch Ice Dance, I want the nightmare female coaches to be well-dressed, okay? That is just, that is their job, okay? Yeah. And if it's a Russian team, I want them to do something a little bit offensive. Skate to R. Kelly, skate to an Aborigine uh, number in brown they won't, let you down, they won't let you down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The <laughs> Russians know how to deliver. Okay. Yeah. I thought my skate was great, though. He skated much better uh, than he did in Skate America, so... Um, they changed the lift and he didn't have a bobble uh, going into it on the transition. I think his, what's interesting is like Kana is a very classical Zueva skater. Like she could be an r &O or an Aldridge girl, right? Like yeah. that would be her at US Nationals. She could skate with Rockney's brother at US Nationals. Like that's right. Fine, right? right. In that group, you know, like when Piper skated with Zach, like one of them, you know? Right, right. You know the type, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like Dice Guy has like a weird knee action and it's always what's made him so interesting as a skater is he has great knees but he has his own kind of rhythm it's individual it's, yeah that's the thing it's interesting to watch that pair up with someone else and as they kind of figure it out because she definitely has to match him like that is I don't right. think he could match her she's doing the accommodating yeah and yeah. she's quite excellent so uh, but she lets him be the star at the same point. Like there, you cannot compete with that in the action right. and that flair and right. All that. Yeah. Right. So well, well, I'm I'm intrigued. Their next Grand Prix is. Are they doing an HK? Probably. Yeah. Uh, okay. Again for the ratings. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. Come on. Um, because what... I wish they had given the performance mm -hmm. this weekend at Skate America. I think the judges were ready to go with them, had they delivered what they did here. I talked to Amy Webster, who was at um, Skate America, and she just said that she thought that what they did was stunningly beautiful, but she felt that the sum was not as good as the of the parts. Like maybe the program is too complicated and the phantom number, and that it doesn't just let their program shine as much. You know how Deanna and Max took out some of the transitions and now they right. look amazing, right? Because it was almost like busy. It was like too much clutter. She thinks yeah. that that's kind of going on in their programs and that they're actually harder than the other teams. And when you have complexity, you sacrifice speed. So, yeah, yeah, but. There was that Christopher Dean program that he did for Tiffany and Jonathan in Russia that I felt was very much the same. It was so interesting and so individual and so unique, but it was so hard that they could never get out of the like focus of trying to execute the move so it didn't really sing. Yeah. And maybe that's what, what she was experiencing there. I just, to me, the 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 choice of material, the vehicle was just not right. So I just sort of disconnected, but. You know who doesn't have too much clutter this year? Is Sasha Trusova. Now. Uh... <laughs> and if you like skating to R. Kelly, you're in luck because she just really went like, she totally went there. And what's so interesting is in the message of wanting to fly, it was this like sad, scary, slowed down version, yeah. And she looks rather injured. Like she actually looks like she can't get off the ice at times. There's something- Yeah, that's what was different to me. I, I wasn't totally understanding, but it seemed very low, her jumps. Like she wasn't quite getting the same lift. Now, conversely, Mark did one of like the most impressive quad luxes I would have ever expected from him. And then, you know, because they like to now think that they exclusively exist together. Um, He's like, did she help you with that? <laughs> there were articles about how their relationship was going to impact them at this event on Sports Room. They are getting the clicks, okay? Yeah, but they're so young. It feels there's something like so weird about like overanalyzing like just a youthful relationship like there that. There is but... something so Judy Garland dating Mickey Rooney about the whole thing. I don't know. It feels <laughs> like, yeah. 
Yeah. Feels invented by L.B. Mayer. I don't know. Like, yeah. <laughs> remember this. Uh, but, the but when Mark did the quad lutz, it was like, whoa, this looks like a skater who does have his technique in order. And then later he was doing like quad sows and stuff where the arms were doing their thing again. And Frank we referred sort of to that as a pond skater in that interview that time. Remember? A pond yeah. skater. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But the Lutz was the Lutz was in the rink and then he moved out to the pond after the Lutz. So and, a pond and then skater was, is someone who it looks like they taught themselves their technique. The way that if you would teach yourself gymnastics in the backyard, yes, that's yes, that's a yes. pond skater. Yes. Right, 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 right. <laughs> um, in general, I just you could even see it in her crossovers. There has to be something with her low back hip glute area, like the stiffness. Um, when she goes to do a spins, it looks really uncomfortable and spins were never her strength. Right. But whatever she did when she was injured last year, I would imagine that that put a lot of force on her lower body because if her ankles weren't uh, working properly, uh, there's some injury where she just looks, yeah. she put her body Again, And this was an example of, unless there was pressure, obviously from who knows where, but I would have sat, I would have sat this season out. I would have healed, gotten used to the new place and the new training. And do you think there I don't is know why there's a rush here? Well, this whole season is a money grab. Let's be completely yeah. honest. For them, they are doing it, and a lot of them are staying because it's paying them very well, and it's incentivized for them. And they don't have any other opportunities. They can't go do right. shows outside of Russia, so they really kind of have to play ball uh, yeah. to a certain extent. I imagine, like, and remember when they got their state awards from the government. Trusova's award wasn't as high as the other people after her tantrum. Right. So right. that was not, um, so you know, the amount of money she gets for the rest of her life is different. Um, I, yeah, I was surprised. I wonder if they felt they had to do it. I wonder if it's a funding thing with the new coaches because I believe her funding is staying with Team Tuberidza because she transferred outside of the period. Um, but what's so funny is it was a great theater. It was a great shot and it had nothing to do with it. But when she was in the kiss and cry, there was a shot of a Terry like turning her back and looking and visually it looked like she's turning her back on Trusova. Obviously she's just doing whatever. And there's just like a weird yeah. side by side, yeah. but everyone was obviously thinking about whatever happened in that dynamic when you're watching the spot of her in the kiss and cry, like visually it was fantastic yeah yeah that's the screen grab yeah okay you just like see the comments being like she was actually looking at her you know you're like, yeah 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 of course yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh and so they called this one the velvet season right <clears throat> which is different than the velvet rope which was a janet jackson album from right. Right. Yeah. although i'm sure they have some novice skater skating to that you remember um, like the uh, the explanation of like what the velvet rope was like Je janet what is the velvet rope and she would have to go on and on and this yeah, is of a course. metaphor in every interview there will be gays who will be responding to the comments what the velvet rope is and please do okay yeah and do you go for it <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Because the velvet season, that's like our version of like, I don't, I think this is still Indian summer where it's just sort of like a period of time in the season where like you switch from fur to velvet. Oh. Because they like vacation and it's like, it's, that's when they would like go down south to like the Mediterranean and things like that. And then they switch out the clothes because it's not so hot there, but it's not so cold. So it's velvet because you start wearing velvet instead of fur. And I was like, oh. But wouldn't you wear fur when it's colder? Like, wouldn't you go from velvet to fur? Well, it's because they go down to the, um, the like, like they, would, they would leave Russia and, or go south. And then it was like, sort of, it was like a nobility thing. And so then everyone would flock there during this period of time because it wasn't too hot and too cold. So you could wear velvet. That sounds colder than upstate New York. I don't know, I can't do no. it. I can't. Yeah, oh. exactly. I mean, if you're coming from St. Petersburg, I guess anything is warmer and nice. <laughs> It's all of Russia, like Ithaca, New York. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I can't. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> don't send me back. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, um, okay. And we saw Petrosian here. Yeah, they both have really bad crossovers. So I wanted to put rewatch Trusova's back crossovers and watch how it looks like she's going. I mean, it is not working correctly. Yeah. Petrosian also has rough crossovers, which is interesting because sometimes she gets off axis in the air, but her rhythm on, like there's a rise and fall to the knee when you're on the ice, right? 
but her rhythm when she her crossovers are all janky going into it and then she like twerks her body and it's like this is not working all together like the entrance yeah. is not supporting the jump and Something about it, the gravity the, her center of gravity seems so high and, and then I'm just back like, on the awesome. on the lutz combo like back tilted back um i don't know how she was capable of that triple axle i didn't know either and it was impressive and it was like where did that come from yeah a lot of her jumps though are not consistent she can rotate amazingly well and when she gets in the air in the right angle we've seen her do quad loop quad sal quad toe triple axle i'm not saying she all did it all naturally but i it's all great Although Shevetsky is not Terry's doctor right now. We're, she didn't think he was taking proper care of the girls medically, looking wow. after their health. When wow. she gets those girls back on the ice, yanks them, you know, pulls them out of the forest, or she's right. taking proper medical care of them? Correct, correct. Got it, got it. Okay, I'm just saying, she seems great, you know, yeah. yeah Remember really when you made Daria do the show, to show, oh, Terry's not that abusive. When's the last yeah. time you saw Daria who's the show of escape, John? Daria, who was one of my faves, and to watch her collapse at that NHK was just so heartbreaking. Yeah. She's doing great, right? Looks like she's yeah. really, she's in it this season, right? We yeah, was, sure, rebounding. Yeah, totally healthy, all better. What happened to Maya? What happened to Maya? Remember her? Like, oh my gosh, yeah. Just you know, just like disappear. It's just like new shiny object, right? In front of your face. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> okay, so Petrosian, when she goes forwards on her crossover, she doesn't finish. Her cross under and because of it it always looks like she's walking when she skates right. forward yeah. Italian yeah. have this problem so go re-watch Petrosian it's a perfect example that someone looks like they are walking instead of skating okay. uh, and that's one thing but she it would actually help her if she could just smooth that all out it would be more like a Katieva who's skating into the jumps is a little bit more streamlined so yeah. that's why they just make everything easier not yeah. even prettier but just easier yeah so they both, yeah, Petrosian has a lot of coordination though. You can just tell like she's a high, high coordinated uh, athlete. And, but if they could figure out, because her entrance is coming from the crossovers into it, it's not so stable and she gets at weird angles. Um, but I would just, yeah, look at that. Also, the middle of her free skate and one channel that put it up, it's like cut out, but go rewatch it. The middle of her free skate sounds like there's a lawn service coming. There's just like this weird, but I, I, it's offensive to anyone with ears. Like, I don't know what this is. I don't care if it's from it someone- in the arena or it was in the music? Uh, no, it's in the music, John. And I, I, it, okay, I, I don't know if we could call it music. It's in the sound accompanying. Okay, <laughs> she's doing jumps on the ice and there is a sound playing. I'm not saying that they're going together. I'm just okay. saying that they happen at the same time. Right, and okay. it sounds like the lawn service is coming okay. outside from all <laughs> angles for like a good thirty seconds, and then like what? It's velvet season. It's time. It's time to manicure the lawns. Yeah. Okay. Can they change that? Find some Carl Richter. I don't care. Like, but yeah, I, I like her. She's gritty. She's fun. Boyko and Kozlovsky tried to do that triple sal oiler triple. It's not gonna chop. Stop trying to make fetch happen. It's not gonna happen. It's yeah, just, it, that's tough for her in particular. Do you know what I mean? She just gets so turned around. The lean on it is just so intense. But I know. And at times, sounds like the soundtrack to Hocus Pocus. <laughs> yeah, the sequel wasn't as good. Not yeah. as good. Oh, I preferred it because the damn kids weren't in it. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. but there you have it they had no business in that film anyway it was all about Bette Midler yes yeah correct correct and the people that don't like it I think are referring to the kids because I was yes. like yeah but, you know I wasn't allowed to see it because my mother would only go by the ratings in the newspaper and if it didn't get enough stars we were not allowed to go and like really my gay ass wanted to see Kathy and Jimmy again because I recognized her in the picture from yeah, this track yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. So I think he must have given it like two stars. One of them, Siskel, Ebert, whichever one wrote for the yeah. news. I mean, if you're looking for an art film, you're not going to be satisfied. <laughs> yeah. Listen, so. Debbie was very um, 
thrifty. You know, we only wasted our, our money and time on movies that had a certain star yeah. rating. Okay. 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 Got it. Three stars Got or it. more. Okay. Yes. Talk to us now where we will literally watch every figure skater. <laughs> yeah. Although yeah. people will say to me like, well, haven't you seen Ice Princess? And I'm like, no, no. No. I saw a clip and knew exactly how bad that would be. Yes. Correct. Yeah, for some, it's just best to just avoid it. Yeah. So I have a hard time with secondhand embarrassment. And it's- Oh, that's a good way to phrase that, yeah. And uh, like watching the movie Stick It or watch, like uh, if I'm embarrassed to watch something, it's hard. Like if you and know- I looking down. I look down a lot in those moments. Like I'm hiding. There are some me. things that are so bad that that was fun. Like I used to recap, when I had a blog, I would recap Make It or Break It every week and the show was awful, but it was also random and it made no sense. Like they'd be talking about sex, then Candace Cameron would be talking about God, then they'd be talking about gymnastics that made no sense. It was like a hodgepodge, strange, and I miss it. Okay, it was yeah, great. Okay. <laughs> Roz from Frasier was a mom. Like, oh yeah, it was. I remember that show actually. There was like an afternoon where I watched like an embarrassing amount of episodes, and I was like, "This is heinous." It's and horrific. Yeah, this okay. is like the third episode I'm watching in a row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, truly, truly terrible, right? But there was like a camp to it that was enjoyable. Yeah. yeah. When I see Canadians do certain things, <laughs> I. And it's really from Canadian skating. And it's this has been a long time. Remember when they did the literal passing of the torch club piece? Yeah. Uh, Tessa Virgil with the pride parade on her Instagram. Like, mm -hmm. there's like- The thank you tour in general. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. The thank you tour where they watch the videos of themselves younger, even though they were thanking Canada, it seemed like they wanted us to thank them. Like, I just, I don't know, like the whole thing <laughs> Canada tour, like, <laughs> <laughs> that was that was a cringe or mm. like you, the interviews about race randomly in figure skating during that one um, Canadian challenge during COVID like we had some rough time COVID there was some really bad programming that we we forgive because there was nothing else but it was, right. it was a tough right. one and skating yeah. can't help itself you know we cannot right right <laughs> The Piper and Paul Evita program, where they actually end with doing the dancing and hold during the bows when it doesn't happen. During the bows, post program. Yeah, it's like watch out for it. Up by the chin. Yeah. Or Keegan, like showing us the kids on the phone every time. Now we're seeing the sonogram the sonograms. I was like, is that a sonogram? <laughs> You know, it would be, it reminds me of when you watch Scott Hamilton in the 90s and you're like, he's going to do the backflip. He's right. going to do it. Yeah. He's going to do it. Yeah. He's going to do it again. Yeah. He's, he's going to wipe his brow, look to the audience, go. And then Jonathan, he's going to skate down the ice and do it again. Okay. Right. Yeah, exactly. And, go. and a wig <laughs> and a vest. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. I can't do it. I can't do it. Okay. I don't drink alcohol anymore. I can't do it. All right. There's, there's certain things you can't do sober. Okay. Uh, it was one of those more Velveeta than Evita moments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it was interesting because even Mark Hanretti was commenting that in their materials, they said that they had always wanted to do it. They just hadn't found the right cut of it. And it's clear like that. I also believe that Mark would like to do all of that corny shit. Like he has that vibe. Like we love him, but he does have that like sheen to him where- Well, see, interesting. If it gets I, him in front of a camera, he would do it. Yeah, he see, would. I think he's more lyrical than that sort of like razzle dazzle, right? Have you ever seen his Instagram feed? He will do anything for the, you know, when he's watching and stretching in the splits or like, come on. We yeah, love yeah, yeah, yeah. We all like validation. Yeah, yeah, yes. okay. Yes. <laughs> but it was, I loved, I loved their rhythm dance. Mm -hmm. I did like their rhythm dance very much. I like his look a lot. Um, and in the- oh, are you into a tattooed man? This is very Kourtney Kardashian of you. What's okay. going on? <laughs> yeah, we're interchangeable. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the the interesting thing about the free dance, I noticed like 
I'm Team Kim about the tattoos. Would you put a bumper, sticker, would you put a bumper sticker on a Bentley? No, you wouldn't, Jonathan. Okay, no. But, but when you're not in the mood for a Bentley, but in the mood for something else, then maybe. <laughs> um, but the the Evita was clearly telling a story. They seem more like actors at times than athletes, which is part of the ice dance thing. But they are so committed to their backstory and all of this sort of stuff. But even knowing Evita, I was not necessarily following. I okay. was working pretty hard. It does not go in chronological order. Like it's it's just which made sense. It started with her like dying and then sort of like backtracked it, but then didn't use some of the really exciting dance music in there. They were clearly trying to tell a particular story. I don't know. I think he's sensational, and I think she's very good. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so where I notice it is in their one foot step sequence or whatever the terminology is there. Sometimes she's not always as extended as I wish she would be. Jonathan, she's know. never been extended. She has like tight uh, legs and short legs and a longer torso. So she never gets the extension. And then she's and more pushed forward. Yeah. And, but, and it's it's kind of special, but that's what they try to hide in every program. And that's why they go kooky as opposed to the fact that you, it's why they've but done all this. Kooky, but this was very clearly like they're looking to win an Oscar. Like this, that was their strategy here was go I for drama and theater. I thought there were some really cool parts to it. I mean, the part when they're moving back and they slide down on their knees, like there were some really memorable moments. And I really- yeah. And she passed under his leg at one point, like there's some very cool stuff, yeah. I think their material is leaps and bounds ahead of what Chalk and Bates are doing. I and, agree. And ahead of the Italians who, I can never I, remember what they're doing from week to week. I mean, I, I- They became much more of a factor here for the overall season than perhaps I had anticipated. Yeah. I think they're really in it. Yeah. So. Brace yourselves for that Canadian PR, should they be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Because again, who else are they pushing at the moment? You know what I mean? They could put all their eggs in this basket and really go for it. Obviously the ladies. I mean, those were some great outings. And uh, the women, as they're referred to now. Um, yeah. In the short, actually. They, they're gonna put I, everything behind Piper and Deanna. Yeah. yeah. This is, that's what they have. Yeah. Agreed. But I didn't, I, in my own head, I had just sort of put Piper and Paul a few spots down. Like, no way they could be above Chalk and Bates. But then with the material this year, I think it, it's possible. I think it's possible. I, yeah, I, I really think, I know that sometimes Montreal like, doesn't change the programs once they get to this point, and obviously they had a late start, but that chalk and Bates free dance is a mess. And apparently there were US officials at Skeet America who were just like, yeah. And I always wonder how it gets to that point that someone actually debuts the program at that point in the season and it's, that universally panned? Are people just telling you what you want to hear? When right. the judges come into monitoring that they say, wow, is it that they only see it in parts? Do you remember like, Tenneth and Ben did this program to That's Entertainment and it was like universally thought of as like one of the worst schlocky free dances we have ever been like forced to witness. And you wonder, well, how did that get to the Grand Prix if they had Champs Camp and they have what, what's the point of all of those monitoring sessions yeah. if not to sort of catch that when you can? Because I do know once you're in the Grand Prix, mm -hmm. I would imagine it's a nightmare yes. to go back to the drawing board. You're losing time, you're losing momentum, you've lost the money. It's, it's easier to try to tweak what you already have. But if you had this earlier and kind of knew, eh, let's kind of wipe it. But but one year, Julian changed Bobova and Soloviev's program and he openly admitted that they were keeping all of the choreography and just changing the music. But did you ever see the side-by-side -side of Medvedeva's 2016 and 2017 longs? Yep. <laughs> For or yeah. Yeah. Was short programs. <laughs> yes, yeah. I was, yeah, that was the, the, the more memorable one for me, yeah. So yeah. Um, I think that maybe they should do that. It's... Well, we know Ashley did that when she went back to the Samson and Delilah. I think she just kept the Romeo and Juliet footwork. That's, yes, because it was a little different. Yeah. Yeah, but you're like, oh, okay, all right. Listen, Choice it took you a long time to learn that footwork, okay? You have to. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so. that was, mm. yeah, I think Piper and Paul look, look to, to be pretty dominant this season. Yes.
Oh. Um, and yeah, uh, it seems like they have a great shot, so. Yeah, yeah. And, and they, they have done a lot for the sport. Like it's, it would be nice to see them yeah. be rewarded, you know? Well then and it also, it, you have to imagine that should they do well this year, yes, they're 30, but then Worlds are in Canada next year, Jonathan. So of course they'll continue. Yeah. Then this is where everyone struggles. Because then you do well at a home world. So we only have two years. Shouldn't we just continue anyway? And then you're like running out of steam and then not at your peak at the Olympics. And then right. your KMT being like, can the sport just end already? Can I break it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when can I get out? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> this is how that goes, okay? Well, when you they seem to have a healthier relationship with the sport, perhaps, on the outside, Piper and Paul. KMT seemed like she was doing great until COVID. So I don't know. It's just this. Yeah. yeah. It's like mid a mid quad worlds again. I don't know. It's just all in. Yeah, you see how this is going. But I would also, I mean, depending on how it goes for this year and then potentially for them next year, if they stay in, like, what's the climate? You, you know, if they don't really see much competition coming up for them. I did hear from someone that Russia is preparing for the possibility of you know being out for four years at least yeah i mean that and if that is the case that could be a huge deciding factor for them because those I are don't... the teams that would really you know take over a potential spot for them but right now even in the ones coming up i don't really see someone challenging them in the near future not well i do have to say um just in terms of skating quality I thought that, you know, and this was, I was having, trying to figure out like what is going on with the Montreal dance school because they are at a crossroads, right? They had a lot of very senior successful teams kind of graduate and unless the French should come back, which I don't know. Mark alluded to in one of the dance programs, he was like, oh, cause the French are taking the season off. And I was like, They were taking their work? skates off in the kiss and cry. Like they looked so <laughs> So yeah. they to quit after 2018 and were annoyed to continue. Uh, I mean, they could always come back. People, you know, you're away from the sport and then you rediscover that love after being tired. So they could. Um, I, but you can start to see that the skating is getting better. Marjorie and Zach, I, I noticed real improvements in their skating. For me, the weakness is their material. I mean, they in the free dance in particular. I know you have like a music thing about the rhythm dance, but I do think the rhythm dance is well skated. Yeah. What yeah. I noticed in the free is that they're skating to Nureyev and when he does an extension, his leg is never extended, right? When he puts his leg out and you're actually skating as Nureyev and you are never pointing that toe or extending that leg ever. So yeah. area opportunity for improvement. Uh, yeah. Right in the, whatever they do, the big pictures, like, try to capture that character and but perhaps in the big picture of the next olympics mm -hmm. perhaps to give them this type of material is to just start to go there and refine this aesthetic even if it's not the aesthetic they end up being defined by or stick with in future seasons because again i i, I forget like they must be they must have an overarching plan also Mm -hmm. Because for me, the Rio program was so entertaining and so infectiously fun and all this sort of stuff. But I suppose if this pushes them into an uncomfortable place for them so they can uh, like sort of tweak the things and learn how to master this style more, it will only behoove them, you know, to have done it when they go to something fun again next season. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we'll see. We'll see. But I mean, I was in... I didn't know whether or not they would be bronze here or the Parson, uh, Green and Parsons would be. Well, not but with again, that. This is a material situation. I think if one of them had like the free dance of free dances, they would have won by a landslide. Yeah. Over the other one, I mean. I have to say, I had a moment where I realized who Roman Hagenauer is. When <laughs> I watched, and it took me, I was watching um, Fear and Gibson and they made a lot of little changes to the free dance and actually looked a little, careful like it looks like they need just some more mileage with all the tweaks yeah. but that's yeah. the benefit of having done so many competitions and they look so much 
they look much stronger than they have in their past. The skating skills, I know people say that they have room to grow, but they are so much better than what the Lion King program showed. And if you right. go back and rewatch the Madonna program, like they have actually improved leaps and bounds. Yes. Yeah, because we were always so excited by the material and performance, not necessarily the skating. And now you see that level coming up yeah. with it. Yeah. And they still, this program has room to grow. But when, when they got to the choreographic sequence, so Roman is the one that choreographed this. I want a video of him showing them how to do this. Like, can't you just see him with the arms doing it? And then, right. then it struck me who he is doing that. Like him showing them that program. Is him. Yeah, but is he also Martin Short from Father the Bride being the <laughs> wedding? <laughs> Potentially. Potentially, yeah. <laughs> That's Highlight very... of the film, scene stealer. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, Marie France did the good work when they came over to the to the barrier and started oh, that yes. whole thing. And she was like, "All right, here we go. I'm right in the shot." And but I wanted to see him there, right? Like we needed yeah. him. Yes, and it was. Well, was he, next to he was, but he was a little yeah. out of time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Our luck, we'll get like Patch in there, and Patch would be like. Good job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have, fun. Have fun. Yeah. <laughs> that cam, where is it? From the Olympic broadcast at the 2018 Olympics when it was like Marie France and Romain, when everyone was doing their free dances. That yeah. to be recorded. And sometimes. actually at Skate Canada last year when I went, um, it was them and then Barbara. You loved Barbara. Yeah. Yeah. Barbara just gave you the whole show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was the show I ended up watching more. Mm. Well, have you seen the Italian skate? I mean, it's I mean, no, because I was too busy watching Barbara. <laughs> They're not the most theatrical. Um, okay, so the green and parts, I got several people. They, I don't know if you got them messages, but people who watch the ice, people who are ice dance fans are like supreme, the like yeah. skating nerdiest of all fans. Yes. Jenny doesn't sure. have time to watch ice. She's like, no. Okay, yeah. right. We were like, they liked the glide of Green and Parsons. I got a couple messages from people that said their skating skills and quality in person was really noticeable. But what was also noticeable was that their programs were just juniorish and terrible. As juniorish, that's right. Yeah. But this Michigan school was thrown together without any experience, and they threw them a lot of top teams and created kind of like a political center. But they were on the verge of something so exciting last year with that free dance material. Okay, when Charlie and Meryl skated, they had so much power and they were exciting, but they almost skated like antiseptically, like there was no like chemistry, right? It was- Yeah. yeah. So he must be the choreographer of this school, right? And also 15 years ago, do you know what I mean? Like- But like- I don't feel that he could like teach a guy how to like perform. And do you notice that this whole choreographic step is like guys are like being as flamboyant as possible. I mean, yeah. you have Lila and Lewis like shaking their, <laughs> uh, right? Uh, yeah, doing that. Uh, I don't know how to say that without getting myself in trouble. Um, <laughs> then you have like Paul letting it all hang out and he's in the sleep, like it is, a rainbow, raining Skittles moment from the air. Like this. I'm here for it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here for it. It is fun. Apparently this is the most important thing in ice dance. Like get the people going as opposed to these pattern dances, right? But like the Charlie aesthetic in every program is like, okay, Ian Somerville is going to have a button down shirt and it's just going to be open. Because yeah. Jonathan, you know, that just shows flow. Well, yeah. and then Jonathan is going to do the same thing. You know, they're edgy and relaxed. It feels so dated and tired. Yeah. It's like season nine of American Idol and the guy's pulling out the guitar and you're like, oh hell. You know, I just- yeah, like, this moment is fast, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Th their aesthetic is not where it needs to be. I think yeah. their skating is where it needs to be, but the choreography and the packaging are not. So. Yeah, and again, they, I loved last year's free dance. It was so interesting and they were about to become this really interesting pair and then they totally got 
sort of whitewashed. It was- and When we were watching Diana and Gleb on the live barn, when they first were down to, um, uh, went down to Virginia, uh, Green and Parsons had other programs. He, they had this program where he did this big Ina Bauer and they created this cool shape on the eye, like this- That's program. what I want from them. Yeah, it's yeah. not it. Yeah, that's too bad. It really reminds me of like a Marina's Wave of program with Rockney's brother. Like, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I don't, and I don't even know if he was the one that did these like dreadfully pleasant but boring programs that I remember, but that's. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a shame because I think they're excellent. Yeah. They're but, worthy of better. Yeah. It's bad when you see the costumes come out and you just know. Yeah, yeah. right. It's it, it's actually matched the music that is about to come. When you see a girl come in with those, those long skirts in a pastel color, pastel, yep, every and time. And a guy in like light gray to light tan and suspenders. Yes, you are totally describing the formula. Yeah. <laughs> you okay? Like I can't. This is going to be a long eight minutes, like four minutes plus the marks plus. Right. And of course, they're they're always like the nice skaters, so people right. are going to like it. Yes. Right. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. I agree. I it's agree. Like the Tubitani's did that trilogy, and you know we had to, how many times did they tell us skating our free dance was paradise? Oh God, oh God, I can't take those. Yeah, we have a different definition of paradise. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh man, I that was a level of contrived. That was hard. That that whole thing that their free dances were a trilogy. That I, I... great, great. Enjoy talking about that in the interview. I guess, yeah. That came across, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, so I have to tell you, one of the most confusing things for me at this Skate Canada, and I'm, I'm sure that there is a reason because when I was looking at the judges, like detailed sheets on skating scores and stuff, they were all in alignment, but it seemed like young you did not have a chance here. And I thought she did fine. Like, I understand that there was an edge issue here or this sort of thing, but when I was just looking at the content and looking at the overall skating skills compared to some of those around her, in my opinion, she, I was getting the vibe that she was really passed up here, but maybe I'm not understanding. So my understanding of what happened to her, you know, she switched coaches from Tammy to Victor Pfeiffer. Victor, who's from Delaware, right. went there. Right. And he's like quietly doing better. He had that kid back that we liked in the Junior Grand Prix. And right. he's known for being a good technician and like tough Austrian trainer, right? I, like he was helping Tammy and probably got too good and they're not working together in <laughs> Colorado. Just like, remember when, remember in Colorado when they took that group picture and it was like Tam, Tammy, Tom, Eddie, Christy Crawl, and like someone else, they were all gonna work together. And that lasted for like, not even as long as it took to post the picture on Instagram, right? right? Like, or, by the time you were sharing it to say some, what, what the hell, it was- They, they were already involved, yeah. Were, yeah, okay. So um, I, like Young you switched, she also had like typical post Olympic season injury, time off, grew, right? Like has to get back in shape, maybe lost her jumps in the process because of injury and time off. And probably the Korean be like, let's do a million more competitions into June for whatever. Yeah. Right, yeah. Um, I think that um, she seems to be growing and getting better. That triple axle is still under, but it looked yeah. slightly better to the naked eye in real time, but it's- I'm sorry, like at the end of the day, here, wait, hold on. I, I wanna look this up. I, again, especially in the free skate, just even with the material she did, I was just shocked. Um, Are you on skatingscores.com, our favorite website? Yes, well, because they're often the ISU one gets rid of the detailed judges sheets and they keep theirs. I wanna know who he is in the worst way. Like he will, yeah. he even watches the TSL live shows, but watches them in an archive, but then I'll get a message about something, but then I don't know who he is. It drives me crazy. He knows it too. Like he likes I that. I found him once. I found him once. Um, but Nolan no, knows who he is somehow. Nolan figured it out. And he, yeah. Well, Nolan. Savvy. Yeah. <laughs> Nolan will figure it out. But um, and like, we're his big fans. I want, so my dream is that you can like search 
I, I want him to open up the rescoring to everyone. I want him to install Google ads so that we can at least be like um, reimbursing him for all right, of his- for the time and effort, effort. yeah. Like, yeah. Don't be a martyr, put the Google ads on there. Oh, come on, girl. Like we will pay you a monthly fee, like whatever. Like let's- It's one of the most helpful sites that exists, yeah. Can we help him out? Like what, I don't know, he's- yeah. Monetize, monetize. Monetize, honey. Um, also, I think that we should be able to like, I wanna be able to like, look at Ala Shahovskaya's like greatest hits, you know, like Helena mm -hmm. Polterik. Like I wanna see okay. every competition she has been in and like which sketchy results protocols can we pull up, right? Like, okay. <laughs> remember, when, remember like Judy Bloomberg or okay, when Jonathan's mother gave uh, Hubble and Donahue that Lift. This violation at Four Continents, yeah. Don't you want to see what else she's judged and what countries right. she represented? Yes. Right. Well, that was the thing. There was that, I can't remember which country he ended up representing. It was like an Azerbaijani judge at the um, Olympics, I think. And then Maybe, when I, you know what we need it for? Someone told me Nebelhorn in the Olympic year is the sketchiest competition for like the lower rank countries trying to, because sometimes that's how they get funded, right? Oh, like sure that okay. they get someone to the Olympics. So that's okay. where cash payments are going. Okay. But I remember like, I just did my own Google research and then to just find this guy that hopped countries and always gave sketchy scores. It was very fascinating. Yeah, that Google, would be. There was sketchy things happening in Budapest. Then there was sketchy things happening here. Like, I don't. Yeah. 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 So but again, I felt like something sketchy was going on for her. I mean, yes, I understand the triple axle was under rotated, but I mean, she got two points, but she's yeah. doing two Lutzes and two flips, but then, you know, it's just getting knocked out. And then just to see Rika and Star with such watered down content place above her. And, and it's not like they were it's sensational artists and young, you wasn't like, I find sort of the overall skating skills quasi related between them. Um, it, it just sort of was perplexing to me. I would have had her higher. Yeah. So that's all. Um, I liked, um, I have I, 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 I have to say the ladies event, with the women's event, sorry, years, not trying to be misogynist, it's women, years of right, this. Right. My yeah. Okay. Um, it was a very interesting event. The men's event here, the short program made me worried for the sport. Like it was one of the worst skated events I have seen in a long What did you think of Shoma's program? The, the short or the free? The short, because we had seen the free. This was my first time seeing the short. Right. Thing. Okay, when Gravity came on, I wanted to snooze at the beginning. Granted, he does beautiful skating. Right. I hated it. How about you? I was just shocked that that was the way they went for him because I was like, wow, that this seems so un, un Shoma to me. Um, and it, it was fine, but it didn't really click. I was surprised by that like sort of vibe that that was the energy they wanted for it. And they switched it. Remember when he was gonna do the Michael Jackson and it was over the top and maybe bordering on bad taste, but it was exciting. I, I, yeah. I, really would, I would rather that, okay? Especially because he's giving us controlled, beautiful artistry for the free. So I would rather see something completely different in the short. My yeah, and he can do fun energy. You know what I mean? So yeah, it was a perplexing joy. Gravity for two minutes and 50 seconds it feels endless. Okay, gravity. Oh my God. It's one of yeah. those bad exhibitions that you give like a Ross Minor type where you're like, what do you give him for the exhibition? Right. Here's a lovely ballad. Yeah. Like what is Tim Gable going to skate to on, on Champions on Ice? Something. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you do all your quads, Tim? <laughs> like, I don't yeah, exactly. Know. You're not doing those at the United Center. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Every night on tour, not going to do quads. Tim, what are you going to skate to? Yeah, right. <laughs> but I'm obsessed with Rinka Watanabe, I have to say. But yes. and who wasn't even supposed to be originally on the Grand Prix circuit. We have to rework her program. She needs to add a second triple axle in. Because it's yeah, I mean struggled with it in the short, but even that kind of struggle, you know, it's like no biggie. And not Lutz. It's on a weird angle and it's the one little mar in the program every time. It's on the diagonal and it the timing looks off. 
if she could get rid of the lots and do a second, we'd have to rework her program, Olivia, a little bit, but and I love Calorie this season. Yeah. If Inga goes clean and keeps improving, she doesn't have the performance of Calorie at all. Right. But technically with that triple axel and her overall skating, I think she's got a real shot at winning some big championships this year. Yeah, if she does two to three over the course of an event, those numbers are hard to chase. Yeah. Yeah. Just because all around, like, Calorie's got great skating skills. Well, so does Rinka. Like, they're, they're yeah. fantastic. So... Yeah, Ring is a bit more at the moment, like um, Dick Button used to say something. It was just like ticking off the box, like taking one yes. element of like, and I like that about, because it's, it's centered and it's grounded and it stays focused, but is calm. But yeah, some of that like magic projection. She's you know? Right, and she's lovely. She needs more wow and she needs more individuality. Like we've seen these programs right. a million times before. Yeah. Yeah. But she does it beautifully. Yeah. And it's getting her- I haven't seen Calories programs before from anyone. So they're like, wow, right? We've seen this Green and Parsons free dance formula more times than we would like to count. Right. Right, at the novice level, at the junior level, uh, yes. Um, but I, I thought it was good. I think she's got a real shot if she gets consistent and keeps building her name. I mean, these are two wins already. She's kind of that person that we talked about how there would need to be new stars this year. She's becoming that. 100%. She's and the juniors. And I think the, the Japanese junior ladies also yeah. are going to come out uh, nice stars. But yes, I think she is, is one of the, the new names that will emerge from this Grand Prix circuit. Because okay. in, in Japan, the one we haven't seen really yet is Mai Mihara. And I'm very interested where she fits into the mix because again like always there's like a cluster of names and it's interesting to see who's going to consistently rise to the top yeah i think uh rinka elim kim uh kauri young Yu. i mean those are kind of the big uh luna those are the big names right now yeah yeah i mean what was fascinating of course i saw the scores before i saw the skating and I like refreshed a hundred times. I was like, I'm sorry, did that say Star Andrews was the silver medalist? Oh, hold on, hold on, refresh, refresh, refresh. Is this correct? Is this is this the right website? Um, but when I went and saw her programs, what was different to my eye was that it looked like she was getting so much more spring than I'd ever seen from her before, in the, which was sort of what was missing from Trusova. It's the best she's ever looked. It's the best she has ever skated. I don't know how that happened, but suddenly just that initial takeoff just had a bounce to it, and she was getting so much higher in the air that I'd ever seen her get before. I remember yeah. she's coming off some serious health issues from last year. So right. uh, she was incredible. Uh, it was... It worked. It was wow. The spring, so, the spring was the big difference, and uh, <laughs> her kiss and cry response was a, a real gem, a real gem. She was giving that like what, <laughs> like this whole amazing thing. It was very endearing. So yes. Um, what is your take on Rika Kihira? I mean, she's slowly improving. I don't think the doctor has cleared her for lip or lutz yet. Is what Brian was saying. Um, it was pretty. It was lovely. It, it was, was solid for what she did. Mm -hmm. You know She's what I mean? more artistically open than we've ever seen from her because that's yeah. always kind of been the thing. Two things I know about Rika. Artistically, she's been more closed off. Right. And Jonathan will remind us that he was surprised how slow and small her skating yes, was. I was, watching. because again, I was such a fan until I was like, oh, okay, okay. I think the Titanic music actually really works for her. The dress is a little severe. Uh, the, yeah, there's a bit too much with like the black on it or something. I was just like, I'm not quite sure what we did there, but yeah. But, but okay. I forgot, it wasn't until I saw Brian and the Kiss and Cry that I even remembered that that was happening. Mm -hmm. But yeah. um, again, she seemed to, to do a really solid job. Obviously, it just, just reminded me of like Elaine Zayat content in 1994, you know, but so we'll see what they can do. You know? I'm interested in this Brian comeback because they had no one. Then June was training by himself in Korea. Now he's back. Rika's back for the Grand Prix. So maybe they're starting to rebuild. Maybe they've, I think it would probably be positive for all involved. So yeah. yeah. All right. 
we need to do the Jersey girls and then the Canadian girls. Which ones do you want to um, get first? Let's start Canada. Let's start Canada. Maddie uh, Skeezy leading after the short and Gabby Daleman second after the short. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And I Gabby, mean, Gabby's initial combo. Fantastic. Reminded me of of a previous version of Gabby. And I was like, oh, and then the other two. And you could even see Lee try to sort of give her some information in the kiss and cry and she shut it down. This is my take on it anyway. She kind of shut him down and she goes, no, I'm happy, I'm happy. Like, as in she didn't want any information in the moment, she wanted to ride the high of that short program, which was far from flawless, but you could tell obviously it was not expected to go as well as that. So I think we knew the free state was coming. I've noticed with her in general, it seems any jump above loop, she seems to have really lost the timing for. It seems like toe is her best, double axle, sometimes triple loop, but the other jumps seem to be more of a struggle. And yeah. she really has quite a leg wrap that, and when it goes wrong, it really kind of unravels in the air and she sometimes gets lost in rotation. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, especially but on the lip. And lots, I think, yeah. But the, I did not expect the Maddie Skeezes situation and finishing ninth in the free skate. You know what I mean? Um, there was a there was a glass piece on the ice from Flowers, and I don't know if that's she had a really scary fall at one point. Um, I think that this program has such like bad energy around it, and it's like three bad outing. <laughs> Scrap it. Just scrap it. Go back to last year. Go back to anything, anything else. Like oh. this is just, this to, just to switch the mindset on it. You mean? Yes. Yeah. At this point, like because I don't mind the program for her. I know we kind of had a different opinion on it when it first premiered the West Side Story. But again, when you have now reiterated such negativity around the the program, that would be hard to shake. I think they need to reframe her season. It's like going down, like re and it's not supposed to like she this is an open not supposed to yeah of course of course the, i mean but again same trajectory is sort of what's going on with lindsay i think lindsay got a lot taller over the last couple of uh months so i think she's adjusting is what i think there and i know that you become a tall like if you're a tall giraffe you have but to I was gradual where like I, I know people that like when they just sort of like spurt up immediately it's such a nightmare and that's when it's painful and all this sort of stuff i mean i was six four by 12 or something like that yeah i had a big growth spurt um when i was 15. And it I, probably hurts, right her, i had acne that was like so bad for like two years because of that growth spurt and the amount of hormones that were released like i used to have to put this like glycolic acid on my back it's so funny to me that people will tell me that i have good skin now because i was like burning <laughs> like the bat yeah. for years um i think that she got taller you notice she needs to increase her speed and i think the off ice whatever they're doing i would look at because usually when people become taller and they've got long limbs to get into rotation is the struggle and she her biggest struggle is with the under rotation sometimes and now that she's tall it is going to, that's something you have to work through. I remember Evan Lysacek said about how important it was for him to keep working core with a trainer and doing Pilates and doing stuff. Like, I think the off ice for her will probably be more important than what she does on ice as she gets- Oh, interesting, here. okay. You can just watch her triple, triple. Like you can just tell it's how quick you can get in rotation and the speed going into it. So I think that if she can, the speed is a big thing. And then, and I know that she goes to edge classes with Igor like really early. So she is trying to work on it. Like that girl is going before school at like 6.30 to an edge class with ice dancers. And like, she's hustling, you know, I think it's just gonna take time. And I would think that that- It's just a recalibration that's happening in the moment. Yeah. Yeah, I think that, she, and I think that if they really work with her on speed, it could make her way more exciting because she's not like she's shyer, right? So I think if she's she's athletic and if she becomes like she's got actually pretty good skating skills, but if she could add the speed to it and really fly, I think it could make the skating just 
come up, you know, because yeah. he's like serious as a competitor. But when you don't have speed, it just kind of like loses it a little bit. But right. she's doing like, she has really nice movements. She's got good spins. And I think that they can, they're going to have to like find that formula for her right. and put her right. over the top. Because the one thing, Ava Ziegler is super fast. Like she- Oh my gosh, her, her PCS was like, woo. You know what I mean? Like, so it was she great. Flies. Like she's the point where you actually have to like, control her more like there she does a little thing on the landing and galini used to point it out and the she, with her arm and but she is such like a naturally beautiful skater like connects with music some people like the adele some don't but she really has it and i think and she skates up is the one thing i know i love that yeah I identify with that concept. <laughs> I mean, they only found out last minute she was going here. I mean, she's the type that kind of rises to the occasion. So yeah. I think people will really like how exciting she is, like, and get behind She's that. become so much more of a factor than I realized this season. From, from really her contribution yeah. now, now, she's doing some really solid work. And it's clear, like, you see the international judges not really understanding what to do. Some of them had her in second and first mm -hmm. in PCS. And some of them did that heinous thing where they just anchor her PCS right where she is technically and put her down in, like, seven, eight. You know what I mean? Something like that. Um, but suddenly, with Star sort of getting this new spring, with, did she say Ava Maria, Ava Maria? Ava, yeah. Ava. Uh, her, her sort of having some like really successful outings for her, Lindsay sort of recalibrating, you know, like it's suddenly making what comes up for national quite interesting, Amber Glenn, like what's Gracie going to do? It's, it's going to be a very interesting competition. I Isabel, think. right in there, yeah. yeah. Yeah, suddenly where I was like, oh, it's like an Isabel Lindsay showdown and then meh. And then I was like, wow, the whole thing in just a matter of a couple of weeks has gotten completely turned upside down in from a spectator standpoint, very exciting way. So, I think it needed to happen for US skating. A hundred percent for me to go to nationals. I'm like, oh, I, I go to San, San Jose now. What an interesting ladies event that will be. And I don't know that I felt that a couple of weeks ago. I. Uh, who knows what's going to happen? I mean, they are so, but I think it will push all of them to get it together. Yes. When they realize the depth might be there, the, the, it might be more competitive than they thought. I, I don't think Lindsay's the type that's going to just like have a bad Grand Prix and not do something, right? Like she's driven. She's one of those like quieter, uh, fierce types. So, and Ava's yeah, okay. is one that rises to the occasion and you right. know it's pure energy right <laughs> go back and watch patricia mansfield 1995 i don't know who the choreographer was but like wow that is some athleticism <laughs> okay like, <laughs> maybe not since tanya <laughs> okay like that okay 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 yeah. um what do you think of the men's event here who, who, uh, okay the show map program in the free the opening yes. They need to add a little something. And I think that they could make a couple of tweaks to the, there's a part where the music all of a sudden like starts bouncing almost and he needs to, and he does some stuff. It needs to be a little bigger, but it is like- After the camel spin, right? Yes, parts of yeah. that program are like becoming a masterpiece. That whole section with the spread eagles through the cow, it's- Oh my gosh, get out of here, yeah. And he looks like he's trying to be more controlled than we've seen him in the past. Yeah. Yeah. Even so, though some of these landings were wild, obviously the first two quads and then in the, the short, the combo and things, but it's a different kind of wild. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's not a reckless, careless wild. It was just, you know yeah. what I mean? And he's saving, saving stuff and doing the triple toe when he can after it, you know what I mean, in the, the combo and the free skate and things. Yeah, I just, I was just sort of confused by the short program. But I do think that this, this free skate will continue to evolve into something quite masterful by the time it make, makes it to Worlds. Yeah. Um, and Kao, Kao, Nura, what, I mean- He had a lace issue, so he missed part of the warm-up, 
because and that was in the free skate i didn't because i didn't watch the warm-up so i didn't know because he stated again that i think the short program is a great vehicle for him he always does it really well again i mean we've discussed sort of where we stand about the material for the free skate um, i think his biggest thing in the short is if he could take his time on the movement so how peggy would be like she's really holding her moves longer than last mm -hmm. season yeah. he needs to do that he needs next year for peggy to say he's really holding his movements she only would talk about it with the women right but, right, yes. right. Well, it's also interesting because that that music that da, 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 like I wonder if it just creates that internal fast pulse, mm -hmm. and so he just kind of rushes a little bit at times. But what what this really was was an event of like a bunch of possible medalists that unfortunately were if kind he, of if tanky. he's going if he's going to do the Beauty and the Beast route, I do think that the the over the top blue jacket situation that he had at the Japan Open makes it more fun than just gray. Cause this is like gray and dated sticky music. Like- Yeah, I didn't know if they were trying to make it less costumey, you know what I, I mean? I think lean into the costumey. Just go for it if you're doing it, yeah. You're doing yeah. it, go all in. Make, yeah. Uh, make it cartoony with that color, yeah, because- yeah his skating doesn't have enough personality without it. So mm. if you're gonna be doing Beauty and the Beast and it has like a La La Land level of love, like you just, you need to lean into it. To yeah. me, it lacks an identity with this. Um, yeah, I, I wondered if that was their strategy to see how that was go, if he was perceived more juniorish with the costumey sort of approach, but I don't know that this was it either. Listen, yeah. He has some of the most gorgeous quads and when he's consistent, who cares? Okay, he's gonna find himself on that world team. I mean, yeah. if he, if they stay healthy and he stays consistent. Uh, I would have to deny sending him yeah. to work. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it makes me actually nervous. Like, can Yuma get healthy again in time? What is going on? Does Yuma need to get healthy in time? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. Let, let Kalmura do his thing and you just keep resting for the big picture, you know? Yeah. Um, what did you, Mateo Rizzo and, uh, he came out with that quad loop because yeah. I was wondering about that quad loop and I was like, what are we doing with this quad loop, kiddo? And then suddenly just nailed one. So that was that was really nice to see. Again, they've got an interesting lineup in Italy to see who's going to end up where. I don't know how many spots they get for the men, um, but, but they have some interesting, interesting things happening over there. And Matteo was kind of slipping behind, but I felt actually overall this was a good a good outing for him, all things considered, I think. His free Bruno Mars, I feel like that has no originality. Um, Bruno Mars is- how it enhances his skating, yeah. Bruno Mars is some of that music that seems like it's designed by a record company to have minimal artistry, like the Black Eyed Peas, but it's easy listening enough that it can be played on any radio station, in a dentist office, wherever, and people will just- right like it Very functional for listeners yeah yeah but artistically his zero point of view right i just uh, i have no interest in watching this for, for yeah, when i think about it i don't recall the program i'm remembering the content and the jumps were great but yeah he's yeah. capable of more he has such good skating skills yes i would like to see him have a program just i don't know what that's because do you think they're still in like retooling the jumps mode this guy hasn't had a program ever like that had unique yeah, choreography. Yeah. And he's wonderful technique and great skating skills. And I, yeah. Yeah. So. It's all there. I, the, the one that interested me, as we always talk about, like the over glorification or the, the too quick to make someone a star sort of PR is Stephen Gogolev. Mm -hmm. like, I don't know. I mean, popping lots of quads, but other quads still happening. I just don't know what to expect from this young man because the hype was so insane for a while. He also never really developed programs that had any personality to them because he got right. the quads so early. Right, right. I'll, I'll be curious, because that seems to be also lagging behind is the presentation to, in yeah. his dating. Yeah. Uh, 
and there's like a stiffness and a lack of knee bend at times, but the quads are fantastic. I mean, his rotation right. ability is incredible. It looks almost like imitation Nathan Chen um, at times and not done particularly. I mean, I'm assuming that's why they went there. Yeah. For that imitation. Yeah, 100%. How about Camden? I have to say for being a college student and he's, doing better with this, uh, working with Alex Johnson. I thought that he's been better than I expected this season. Yeah, so I mean, obviously probably not the, the placements he wanted, but but delivered a nice clean quad in the in the free. And, but again, <laughs> just the like, little tiny yeah. errors that I was like, again, I didn't know if he was on the precipice of really doing it. I feel, unfortunately, like the four, I feel like the four guys he was behind here that's not shabby you know yeah. those are, you're behind Shoma and Cal although eighth in the free yeah well he can do better uh, yeah. yeah so He's that's going to Columbia right and skating so he should probably hunker down a little bit before nationals but it looks like he's on track for the fall uh I I don't know, he's had one of those careers where he's he's doing better than we've seen him on Grand Prix's past. <laughs> in well, Ghost Grand Prix. Sure. That is for sure, yeah, yeah. It was just such incredible momentum for him last season. Yeah. From nationals to four continents to worlds, but obviously hard to sustain. Now last year, last week we talked about how dreadful the Paris event has been, and this week was no different. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously, I love the Japanese and knowing that she has been injured and things like that. They had some really nice moments that were wonderful to see. But but underneath that, those were really tough watches for me. Um, I love the Japanese the pair, too. Say yeah. it again. I love the Japanese pair as well. But as they were skating that free skate. And really, the short, it's the same thing. They have their formula. Yeah. It's the most Julie Marcotte formula. It unfortunately is. That's I, that's my disconnect with it. It is the most Julie Mark. It, it can't get out of the Julie Marcotte way of it all. Uh, this kind yeah. of like uh, sad, lyrical, play in Grey's Anatomy type moment. Um, yeah, I would like to see this team be more original, but they have nice qualities. And I think that they're gonna be really successful this season at the same time. I think so too, I think so too. But you know, what's interesting is when I think fans think of them and why they like them, it's because there's a joy mm -hmm. and lean into it. Like, let's give us a joy. Yeah. Say it again. Music goes against it. I always feel like their music is like four shades too dark compared to what it should be. Like they might not be La La Land happy, but like, Something a little. They're more. closer to La La Land happy in in yes. in their nature, I think, or at least he is. That's what it really is. <laughs> it's more like sad thing is much. Yeah, yeah. And again, that lift is so impressive. Unfortunately, now I know what's coming, and I know exactly what they do in it. But mm -hmm. the fact that it just like covers that whole part of that that rink is always so exciting. And I think you know they're trying to do well, that. Man, Megan wanted us to remember Megan told us how much more distance the Canadian lifts do than the Russian. And it does. I mean, the camera can barely follow it all the way around. The only thing is it's so tricky when you sort of like butt that up to the final moment of the program, because so often I just see it mistimed a little bit because life is tricky when you're skating like that. Um, so it was a sort of a clumsy finish, it felt, just a smidge in the rushing of the finishing of the lift to the final pose, but um, what, what, do we know what her injury was? I forget, I don't, I don't. Okay, I didn't know if they talked about it or not, but. I just heard him say he had an injury, I didn't hear what it was, so. Okay, and then seeing so pleased gave me an indicator that like, they're on a plan and there's a track and all this sort of stuff, so. Well, yeah. what was your moment of the week this week? Oh gosh, I'm gonna say Star Andrews Kiss and Cry reaction is definitely one of them because it is, it's like sitcom worthy. It was so charming and funny and I really liked it. Um, I'm gonna say actually though, it's like just all for you. <laughs> okay, I wanna say because I feel like I'm always hard on them because they're, I'm like kind of a purist and they don't have that like classical line. Right. 
but the Gillis and Poirier free dance in the middle when they do the section when they're kneeling down I loved it I had a complete moment yeah, yeah. And, along with the middle of Shoma's program the spread eagle hole section okay. yeah 100 percent 100 percent and Marina doing the good work oh the announcer at the Dennis 10 memorial was also oh, I didn't catch that. oh okay. And like Japan. Oh, she was phenomenal. Okay. Amazing. Move over, PJ. Yeah. <laughs> I've never someone with more theatricality, more like intonation. She was nailing it. Okay. That <laughs> now it was phenomenal. There was no one to All appreciate right, in the right, audience. Right, okay. It was ungodly hours. I loved it. Okay. Okay. Oh, it looks sexy, everyone. Bye now.